Greetings and welcome to Seagulls This and That. In a shocking turn of events, the murder trial of former Bofana Bofana goalkeeper, Senso Maiwa, has taken an unexpected twist. The forensic evidence, including DNA samples collected from the murder scene, has failed to conclusively link any of the accused individuals to the crime. Forensic expert, Captain Mamshedi Masetla, testified that the DNA samples found on a checkered hat at the crime scene do not match the genetic profiles of any of the five accused men. Astonishingly, the evidence suggests that the hat was worn by two individuals, possibly a man and a woman, none of whom are the accused. This revelation cast doubt on the prosecution's case, potentially leading to a re-evaluation of the charges against the accused. The lack of conclusive DNA evidence could significantly impact the direction and outcome of the trial. However, it's important to note that the lack of conclusive DNA evidence does not necessarily exonerate the accused. It does, however, raise substantial questions about their involvement in the crime. Moving forward, it will be crucial to see how the prosecution addresses this development and whether the focus of the investigation shifts towards identifying other potential suspects. This shocking twist in the Senso Maiwa murder trial has unraveled the DNA mystery and thrown the entire case into uncertainty. Please continue to watch what unfolded in court. Next page four. So I'll go to page four. Uh, basically, page four talks to the, the findings in terms of writing. Uh, here I wrote them down, but it was as I was talking to you here. Uh, excluding, uh, but now I will read it down. So on paragraph 4.1, it says, I say that the donors of the following reference sample, samples were excluded as the donors of the DNA on the swap one with that container number 14DCAH8988 with that bag number PA4002150101. And the head B, which is uh, the DNA date presumable high friction area, and the bag number is PA3007 of Phosphorus case 636 of 10. 2014. <laughs> Uh, and the number is yes, PA4002 150107. And the number is PA3007. 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 So, those reference samples that are excluded. We start with 4.1.1, which is MZ Makisa, with that bag num with that container number 19 DBAF0198, with the bag number PA4004638073, as well as Makisa Mfoko Zeni, with, with the bag number 13 DBAD. 5906, and uh, that is the container number, and the back number is PA5002176. And then the next one is uh, is is uh, uh, O Ntanzi BS Ntanzi, which is uh. 19DBAN1076 and then the back number is PA4004718 737. The third 
is Mure, M. Mure, which is um, M. Mure, which is uh, 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 the container is 20 DBAS6469, and then the back number is PA4009362490. And then the fourth one is into Lifizogu Khe. The container number is 13DBAD7184. And the back number is PA5002162. And the last one is Sevilla MS with the container number 17DBBG. 2598 and the back number is PA4003827490. Laba again, the two of the Niga Dalama, a sample footy game by a kitchen, the Mamasha and the Swagge, Nayoga ETNA, Yababa and the Layo MZ, my PSA container number, a my sample at your one nine DBAF four one nine eight. Can you get a back number? You know, PA4004638602. Can you know my piece? Some trouble is saying container number 13DBAD5906. A back number PA5002176171. Can you get 4.1.2 BS and Danzi? Container number 19DBAN1076. Back number PA4004718737, 4.1.3 M Mube, container number 20 DBAS6469, back number PA4004936249, 4.1.4 Untu Vifiso Ute, container number 13 DBAD7184, back number PA5002177. 590, 4.1.5 Sibia MS, container number 17 DBBG 2598, the back number LPA 4003827407. So, my lord, those particular, the donors of the full, those reference samples were excluded as the donors of the DNA that was found on the swab and also on the head. Manjege laba ge abakaita kufundwa ge bakishi wege bonage ubutige bonage abanto de sela namage abashia ge DNA kuyona uswap one udom kanye futi naso is called. My lord, the case file and its contents were in my safekeeping for the duration of investigation from the date of receipt until completion and I then signed the statement and then it was commissioned. And the date? The date is um, 22, that is the year of April 28. So they just repeat the date? That is the 28th of April 2022. And you adhere to your report and confirm the correctness thereof? Yes, my lord. Now, if I can draw your attention to page 4, paragraph 4.1, you've explained that in order that there must be a match, there has to be a match on all 16 regions of the DNA. Yes. In other words, there must be a full profile. And the result, the conclusion that you arrived at was based on the fact that the, 
donors of the reference sample were not included on some of the loci of the DNA, is that correct? Yes, my lord. Uh, what it must be understood, my lord, is even if we didn't get on, on, a, on a reference sample, <coughs> we didn't get a certain, a certain region, we didn't get DNA. The fact that where we got the DNA, you are excluded. Even if we were to take your reference sample again and type it, you will still be excluded on the ones that you are already excluded. Uh, now, does the fact that no DNA could be found in certain places, in certain loci, does that influence the final result? It, it influenced the interpretation of the results in terms of saying that uh, it will then become that you are not be able to read the person on that particular sample because um, you are not reading him fully in all the DNA regions. So, that's where the influence is. Now, in the field of DNA, do you only exclude and include, or is there a midway in between? Say, for instance, partial inclusion. Um, in, in, in our case, we include and exclude, and in some instance where we don't include you, let's say, in one region, we'll say no conclusion. So if, let's say, we are not including you in one region, will write it as a no conclusion. So we wouldn't say we are including you or we are excluding you. We'll just give it to say, well, we can make a final conclusion on this particular individual. <laughs> Now, just in general, are there any factors that can lead to a situation, a situation where a suspect DNA is not, is not found on the crime scene? Just in general. My Lord, it, it, it will be... Um, or, are, or are they, let's put it this way, sorry, are there any factors that can lead to a suspect's DNA not being found on the crime scene? Um, my Lord, for me to, to say that um, mm -hmm. it's, it will be using like common knowledge to say um, anyone can be, if you are, your DNA is not on the scene, uh, um, for me now, it will be using my common knowledge to say maybe you didn't touch anything on the scene, of which I wouldn't like to go too much on that. Thank you, my lord. Thank you. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates on this captivating trial. Till then. Cheerio.